Today we want to speak about the fact that the only thing to rejoice in is that your name is written in heaven. And uh, the thing is, uh, through the foreknowledge of God, we have been called and we've been chosen. And in this world, we are strangers, we're pilgrims. But um, we have something that we're moving toward. As a matter of fact, we've already tasted of it. I'm talking about the Etz Hayim, the tree of life. And you know, that was forfeited in the third chapter of Genesis, but it's reclaimed in the last chapter of Revelation. And as pilgrims, we can't settle down in this world and with the people who are worldly and with the worldly agendas and the worldly uh, organizations because we are elect sojourners of the dispersion. That's what Kepha calls us. I'm looking at chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 of First Kepha. And I want to talk about foreknowledge. What is foreknowledge? <coughs> Excuse me. It's an aspect of God's knowledge of everything. And that means nothing can surprise him. And just as Yeshua HaMashiach had foreknowledge of his own death, resurrection, and coming in glory, and he told them what he had to suffer in Jerusalem, and he had foreknowledge of what was coming, so God had foreknowledge that we would come to him in faith. Amen? Can somebody say amen? amen. And God was uh, doing this. This was God's work. If you are a believer, it's not because of something you did. Although, there is a condition. Don't say, well, I think Uncle Henry is in heaven. Well, listen, if he's in heaven, it's through faith. The condition of salvation is faith. By, by grace, you've been saved through faith. It's a gift from God. First Kepha chapter 1, verse 5 says, through faith. So if Uncle Henry didn't have faith, don't tell me he's in heaven. Eli was, Wiesel just died. Somebody says, well, surely he's in heaven through faith. If he had faith at the end, he's in heaven. If he didn't, he did, he's not. It's just holocaust to holocaust. You say, that's a terrible thing to say. Yeah. It's what the Bible says. The Bible describes the holocaust that the Jews will go through. It's found there in Deuteronomy 27 and 28, all the blessings and all the curses. And the Holocaust is described. And that's not the only place in the Bible it's found. But there's another Holocaust that Yeshua told us about. You remember? He's speaking about the poor man uh, who wants somebody to go back and tell his relatives, please, they don't want to come where I am. Put, put your finger in the water and cool my tongue because I'm in torment in the flames, and there's a, a chasm, an abyss, a, a, a gulf between him and, and Abraham. And, and, and the elect are on one side of this Grand Canyon, and the, uh, the, the lost are on the other side, and they can't get across. There's an abyss they, that there's no bridge for. This is why Yeshua came. He came to make that bridge with his boim. He came uh, because, you see, sin in my nature, that means the het kad mon fall in me. This is what Rob Shaul was talking about. There was a time when I was alive, but then the commandment came and I died. And, and he, he says that, the doing of it, I can't do. Uh, yes, I agree with the, the Torah that it's good and holy, and I want to do what's right, but the doing of it, I can't do. So that shows that het kadmon depravity is even in the believer. That's why we have, if by the Spirit of God I put to death the deeds of the flesh, I will live. Romans chapter uh, uh, 8, verse 13. 
So we have, we have an ongoing battle between the flesh and the spirit going on in each one of us. But for the unbeliever, exhibit A of total depravity, I mean total depravity, is the same word which is found in Romans chapter 1 verse 27. The doing of it, the deeds they do, talking about sexual perversion, men lying with men, women lying with women. He says this is exhibit A of total depravity in unbelievers. So there's total depravity in unbelievers, and even the believer has to struggle with depravity. Uh, it, it, it's, it's something I have to do every day. I have to put, put to death the deeds of the flesh. And how do I do that? By the Ruach HaKodesh. Because I'm born again, I can do it. I can do it because I have the Spirit of God. And he helps me. The new man in me, plus the Spirit of God, subjects the old man to mortification every day. And that's, the, that's called sanctification. And, and the, you talk, we're talking about the sin of my nature, the head cosmode fall in me. Uh, we're talking about original sin. <clears throat> and the reward of sin is death. But you know what? If, if I'm your employer and you're working and you put in a hard day's work, man, you're sweating, you've really worked, you're exhausted. If you come around on payday, there's a debt that I have to pay you. And if I don't pay you, I'm an unjust paymaster. So when the world with its lusts is doing wickedness, and man, we're, we're working overtime at it. Serial killers are killing women one right after another. Uh, there's uh, bank robbers that are robbing banks one right after another. There are crooked politicians that are making crooked deals in, in, back, in back room uh, places. Uh, the New York Times had, um, uh, you know, uh, grillery, and they showed uh, Hillary uh, on a grill, being grilled by the FBI, and she was on this spigot, on this uh, like like a, a stick, sh showing her being uh, under on on the grill, uh, with the hamburgers and the hot dogs. She's being grilled, uh, uh, and here we have somebody who's a professional politician, uh, who's in trouble, even before she gets in the Oval Office. She's in trouble, and the American public see nothing, no, no, no reason to be alarmed. We're going to vote for her. She's just wonderful, and uh, we, we have total faith in her. And you see, this shows the decadence and the depravity of the nation, the blindness and the lostness of the nation. And the, and the Bible is very clear that because we're working overtime, and on, on, this is the 4th of July weekend, so I'm preaching an independence message. Uh, we're working overtime at sin. And that means that when we come to payday, we're talking about the day of reckoning, you know, when the reckoning happens and we, and, and we have to be paid. God is in debt. He has to pay with judgment. His holiness requires him to judge us on on. Uh, Judgment Day, the Yom Hadin. I should say the Yom Hadin. And um, you know what? This is why, because the wages of sin is death, Yeshua had to die. The Tzaddik for the Rishayim. He had to die. The just for the unjust to bring us to God. He and his boy make a bridge from sinful man to a holy God. And you can't get across that abyss. And you can't get to life. He said, I am the road. I, I'm the, 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 the highway to, to heaven. I, I am the truth. I'm the emiss. I am the life. Now, look, you want chaye olam? You want etz hayim? You want life? You want to have it more abundantly? You, you want to have it to the full? You can't get it the way you're going, friend. You have to go to Yeshua. And, and he has to be your life. To me, to live is Yeshua, to die is gain. Listen, friend, if you're looking at some man in this world, if you're looking at some woman at this, in this world, 
If you're like the rich young ruler and you're looking at the almighty dollar or something in this world, something you can't give up, something you, you just you can't, you can't uh, turn over, you're making a big mistake because he himself carried for me, for me, sin in his life, his body, on the boim. That's what it says in Yiddish. In order with Geola redemption regarding the sin, the tzaddik for the rishayim, the just for the unjust, hine se hayolokim, who takes away the sins of the world. This is my substitute, this is my kapora. This one goes to death and I go to life. All this is found in a Jewish prayer book. Because all who rely on the works of the Torah and on my own righteousness of the Torah are under a curse. Cursed is everyone who does not consent to hold up everything written in the Torah, everything written in the Sefer Torah, to do it, to do it. And this is Paul's problem. The, the right thing I want to do, I don't do. The evil thing I do, I do is what I don't want to do. If that's true, then it's not a cop-out to say it's not me. It's, it's the het kadmon fall. It's, it's the inborn original sin in me that does it. That's why I have to be born again. That's why I need help from heaven. Hallelujah. And cursed is everyone that's hanging on a boin, on a tree. And Mashiach has become a curse for us on the boim. I'm using Yiddish words. Mashiach carried our boim for us and has become our bridge to Hashem. He has become our Etz Chaim, our tree of life. His boim, his tree has become our tree. Because you see, he carried my tree, the tree that I deserved. And he paid a debt I could not pay. The, the cry of justice against a sinner like me, he took, he, he went to, on, pay, on payday, he paid the penalty. Hallelujah. And you know what? Hallelujah. With the help of God, we're going to put this all over 